Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. A major figure in Sweden's rock history, guitarist, singer, composer Rowan Stolt led two of his country's most successful progressive rock bands. His distinctive guitar style combined David Gilmore's debonair mid-tempo, Steve Howe's sharp edges, and Frank Zappa's virtuosity. His vision of a positive world governed by gave the music an aura that appealed to many progressive rock fans. Now nearing 30 years as a band, the Flower Kings return with their 16th studio album, Look At You Now, with its vintage vibes and the warm and inviting sounds that are reminiscent of legendary and classic 70s albums. Look At You Now is all about the invention of uh, grandiose soundscapes and that analog feel that will transport you to a by gone era of rock with swirling synths and guitars and thematic long form pieces please welcome guitarist singer composer producer recognized as a member of the flower kings and transatlantic and one of the most sought out musicians of the progressive rock community rowan stolt to interviewing the legends hello sir wow <laughs> that's that's something you're a hero <laughs> uh, really, yeah. to some i suppose if you ask my family i'm not sure they're gonna tell you this <laughs> oh i'm sure you don't say yeah. the same thing <laughs> kind of bringing in the money <laughs> yeah exactly you can't you can't be fault for that definitely no. i've had um a lot of great Swedish players on the show recently and Scandinavia and from, from all over. I, I, I love bringing prog artists to the U S because they don't get to, to hear them as much, you know, and, and the music is so great. I've had Jonas Lindbergh on recently. Oh, I've yeah. had uh, Jan and uh, Nicholas from Anecdoten. Yeah. You know, that band, a great sure. band. A long time. Um, yeah, I've interviewed Nad, Nad Sylvan, who was yeah. actually eating dinner while we in, did an interview. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's a funny guy. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I like the interview you did with Nad, yeah. by the way. That was did a good, that was a good what, interview. What he had to, <laughs> to <laughs> for, for whatever lunch or, or dinner? Did he tell you what yeah, he, had? He, he had it spread out in front of me, and he had the right. you know, bottle of wine and, you know. Oh, okay. He was yeah. chewing as he was talking to me, but that's okay. okay. Yep. You know, it, yeah. it, it gave the, the show a lot of appeal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a yeah. funny guy. He really is. He is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, Sweden's also known for great bands like Opeth and uh, Beardfish. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. You guys are incredible, I man. I have to say, I mean, there, there's a, a big, uh, long history of progressive rock in Sweden, uh, as yeah. well as pop music. Uh, you surely know. I mean, ABBA and oh, ABBA, yeah, uh, yeah, and other other Swedish artists that are, you know, I don't know if they're famous in America, but you know, they're in Europe and in Japan. They're, you know, pop music in Sweden has been uh, um, successful, but oh, uh, also big time, pro yeah, yeah progressive rock you know exactly i had the biggest crush in the world on a swedish girl and oh. margaret <laughs> ah, <really? laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> i got to see her here um i was about 12 15 years ago and she came out of the audience and, and yeah uh, and hugged my mom and dad and shook my hand and it was my birthday and i yeah. asked my wife i said i said why didn't you ask her tell her it was my birthday maybe i can give it get a kiss from yeah. Anne margaret you know <laughs> and she didn't do it uh -huh. and she's actually kissed tom jones um henry winkler the Fonz, and a bunch of other people eric burden i mean yeah. it's my turn you know yeah definitely <laughs> yeah well i'm going to chat about look at you now okay mm -hmm. here's what i said about the album i said Following in the path of prog rock giants, the Flower King's new release, Look at You Now is pure genius. Intricate, yet extremely entertaining. The great prog rock groups are still alive and kicking ass. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, I love the album. I really, Thank really do. Thank you. Thank you. 
And you guys got you got uh, is it two singles now that are out? Uh, Beginner's Eyes and 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 the Dream is yeah yeah true bit. true yeah yeah I mean the Dream was released I don't know when they say release now I don't think when I think of a single I see like a seven inch <laughs> vinyl I know in, that's that's always like a, the old singles that we used to play on the turntable you know and but but nowadays I suppose it's download or something well it's so, it's definitely out on video it's on YouTube. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And it's a it's a cool video, man. It looks like something that would be very popular on MTV back in the day, you know. It's got all I, those elements. I know, I know. Yeah, I was thinking something like um like almost like uh Peter Gabriel did for Sledgehammer. Right. Kind of clip art thing, you know, moving around and exactly you know, things, you know, moving. Yeah. Videos so, are so important today, I think, you know? I think it is, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, if you have great visuals, it, it really helps. But it's just uh, difficult to come up with ideas. But in this case, we leave it to someone else and I give a few guidelines. I say, can you put this and this and this in? And uh, and then you get to see something and they say, oh, maybe change this, maybe a little bit too much of that. And can you maybe have like a full picture of the band, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it's it definitely the I, I, ideas come comes from or the sort of the uh, the technical stuff comes from someone else. We mm -hmm. we do music, but we have to leave it to someone else to figure out how to do all the visuals, of course. Yeah, it's hard to do it all. You know, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Some people do, though. Some people do their art cover, <laughs> you know, for the albums and they do a little bit of everything, you know. I used to do that in the beginning because right. I, I didn't have money to to pay someone to to do artwork. So I, yeah, for instance, the very first album that was called "The Flower King," I mm -hmm. painted. Th th there's this painting, you know. I think it's actually lying around somewhere here. <laughs> Still, <laughs> I sell it. <laughs> uh, and then we we had a couple of friends, you know, did paintings and stuff for for the band uh, for. Quite a few of the Flower Kings albums, actually, but uh, and things like mixing. I, I've never had anyone else mixing a, an album. It part of it is is kind of I'm a control freak, you know. So I need to have. Sure. <laughs> I I I can hear it in my head what I want, and and until I get there, I won't stop, you know. And mm -hmm. and by the time everyone is, you know, falling. Of the wayside and 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 fall, falling asleep, I'm still there, <laughs> working and working and working, you know, until yeah. I get it. And after the, whatever the fifteenth mix, you know, I say, oh, it's getting there, you know, it's <laughs> slowly getting there. And yeah, and, but I mean, it's it it is what it is. So I think and 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 bringing in uh, like an outside producer that will change things. And it maybe I don't know, maybe it could be helpful in a in a way because it someone coming in with fresh ideas and maybe if we end up in a spot where we feel we're stuck, you know, and, and doing the same thing over and over, then it right. could be interesting. But then you have you got to have the wallet to, <laughs> to pay them or whoever, Todd Rundgren or someone, you know. Exactly. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to uh, record this album? I think from the... Um, uh, well, the starting point is always looking at what we have in terms of songs or ideas, mm -hmm. because sometimes it's even not uh, like a finished song. It's more like a, a riff idea or a, a a vocal section or an instrumental section. And then we say we like it or we don't like it. If you like it, then you, you try to develop it, you know. And if it's maybe like a song that has just uh, me humming, you know, a melody, then I need to write a lyric. And then when you do a proper demo of it. And, and mm -hmm. if, if if the guys like it, you know, and then you go from there to to doing a, a more like a full production finished product, you know. Yeah. So as I say, probably around November last year, that's when we started listening to songs mm -hmm. and and picking what we wanted to develop. You already have material for the next album. Are you working? Uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's always material. Yeah. Uh, there's always material and uh interesting with this one is i think the opening track mm -hmm. material or bits of the first track on this album has 
uh, that's something I wrote even before the Flower King started. So that that's probably almost thirty years ago. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Crazy. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting, and it, it's you know well. Uh, I was younger then and my m music experience was different, you know, and now we've done all these albums and, and all the Flower Kings and the Transatlantic and everything I, I've done in between then mm -hmm. and now. You change your mind and you, you write in a different way and you're thinking that, oh, I, I've written songs like that already. Then maybe I try to do it like that way, you know, and you sure. try to refine what you've done before. You look at what you've done and think I can do song like that but i think i can do it better now you know more effective and, and to the point and, and a better mm -hmm. melody better production or whatever so but anyway i mean we, we ended up with a couple of pieces of music that was written not not now not not last mm -hmm. year not this year but maybe five years ago and uh, as i mentioned uh, as as far as <laughs> even before the flower king started no there was yeah. music that i had lying around and maybe one of the reasons uh, I started the band was I had this type of music progressive rock mm -hmm. that I've been doing actually since I was a teenager but then there's been lots of other things in between you know and more commercial music and, and radio friendly stuff and stuff I've done over the years but uh, coming back to progressive rock was something I enjoyed very much mm -hmm. uh, because, because of the freedom of you can you can you can put anything in into progressive rock. As exactly, I it could yeah. be a pop song. So we we build upon what Beatles did or or these kind of bands, but also mm -hmm. build upon whatever the more complicated prog rock bands like King Crimson or Yes, and even fusion bands like Weather Report and Chicory and these guys, you know. So we put a little bit of everything in there. You know, it's probably a bit of Deep Purple and and other stuff in in there too. Sure. You know? Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a lot of freedom, I think, for me. Working all these years uh, with very different kinds of music, even country music, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I just come back to progressive rock because, to me, that's the place where I feel most at home, you know, and, mm -hmm. and where I express myself. And without thinking, oh, I can't do that, or I can't do that, and that will be too complicated or or uh, will there be an audience for this you know now we're we're doing this and it's uh, frankly I, I i just trust there's an audience for it you know and i know it's not the biggest audience but it's the the right audience you know what i mean <clears throat> it's it's what we want to do so i mean there, there's got to be something like that you know the right audience well, you've got your you got your followers and the followers oh. are they, they they show up big time yeah. you know especially in europe you, europe gets it you know, yeah. I mean, they understand blues. They understand prog rock. America's kind of having a hard time right now with the music. You know, yeah. when Taylor Swift swells out, sells out stadiums, something's going on. Something's wrong here. You know, I pick on her a lot. You know, I, I don't have anything against her, but enough. <laughs> Bring yeah. back rock. Bring back the bands, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just tired of that poppy stuff, you know. It's it's got to move on, you know. Things got to change. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. I mean, there there used to be a time. I see you probably have Jimi Hendrix back there. Is some action figure Hendrix? <laughs> That's Hendrix. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Very cool. I paid I like four hundred dollars for him. <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there was a time. You have to remember when, frankly, Jimi actually went to England. Mm -hmm. to be uh, I know uh, produced by Chas Chandler of the animals you know and and having a hit with Hey Joe and all that we know all yeah. that but yeah but he was an American and he yeah. he already uh, back in the day when he played with I think he may have played with Ike and Tina Turner or something like that or mm -hmm. he played with the monkeys <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah I know, I know. Maybe, maybe not with them but he toured with them <laughs> Yes, he did. He opened for him. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> he, he he took his music to England, and as you say, well, maybe maybe Europe is more open minded. For it is. Different... It still is. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Well, especially like Sweden. You know, I mean, you guys love Prague rock, and 
Yeah. I may end up moving there. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. If you can stand no, the you cold, guys, the you guys and... get a lot of positive. Uh, you know, they always name what are the three best countries to live in the world. Sweden's one of them. Norway, I think, is another one. They always mention Oslo oh, yeah. as one yeah. of the best cities. You know. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. is that true? I mean, uh, well, not entirely. I mean, I. I, mm -hmm. I Enjoy living in Sweden. There, there was a time when I wanted to move to America, and I'm thinking, okay, if I, if I, I need a break, and I need to mm -hmm. go to America, you know. And then you realize, okay, go to America. There's lots of things. Uh, you need your visa, and you, you need to live somewhere, and you need to cover your expenses, and you need to, to right away get into a band where you can earn money, mm -hmm. and maybe then you end up in a top forty band. And what's right. the point? What's the point going there, thinking you're gonna play whatever progressive rock or, or or get a gig with Frank Zappa or something like that? That won't right. happen. You know? So I think I was thinking again, and this is when this is like 35, 40 years ago. Yeah. So I I stayed in Sweden, and and thinking of it now, I'm glad I did, mm -hmm. because it's great living here, and uh, of course, it not nothing is perfect. So Sweden is not perfect, you know, and, yeah. and it. Taxes are high, and um, and uh, lately there's been lots of shooting in Sweden. Actually, really, I know, you don't hear about that. Yeah. No, I know you have it in America, oh. but it's, it's it's coming here also. I think it's basically it's just like very young people, like fifteen, right, 14, 15, 16, You know, and and these are drug deals, and yeah, suddenly they turn up with a gun, and you know they mm. go on the sickle and they shoot one, someone and then they're gonna get even and someone else is shooting in through a window at night and stuff like that and almost every night unfortunately so that's a sad thing that happened the, the last two three years actually wow but i mean apart from that that's that's sort of isolated also so i mean generally speaking sweden is uh, uh it's a good country to live in you know right uh, a little bit offside when it comes to touring because we start a tour in Sweden and then you go down south to mm -hmm. other parts of of Europe, you know. But yeah. uh, but I'm I'm happy living here actually, and I'm glad I I do. Yeah, as mm -hmm. things turn out now, you know, and the war in Ukraine and all that is exactly. Yeah, yeah. is uh fentanyl is that a big issue there too? Like like it is here, the fentanyl. I don't know. I couldn't yeah. tell. I suppose it's it's around somewhere, but I I'm not it's really killing people. Team, to be yeah. honest, it's killing people left and right here. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I feel bad for them, you know. And uh, yeah. sometimes I feel the the youth is is lost. It's so. I know. Um, I don't know. Everything is very different from when I was young or younger. And and uh, there's yeah. lots of drugs around at that time also, but things is sometimes I feel young people are are lost in a way. You know, it's it's about so much about uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to how to yeah, put it. it. I, I'm just happy. I mean, my my kids. I, I have two sons, and they, mm -hmm. as a father, you always worry a bit about where are they going and who are they. Yeah. See you know, who are their their friends and and will mm -hmm. they turn out okay? And and they did. <laughs> I'm just so happy and grateful, you know, that they did, you know, and and they're doing well and they're behaving well and they treat mm -hmm. other people in a good way. And I think it's probably coming from if you're living in a home where where your parents are okay and have have good values. I think it's it's you That's don't everything. To, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and I never I never ever told them you, you you can't smoke pot or you can't do that you can't drink right I, I never told I told them I have friends that maybe mm -hmm. you know they went the wrong way and this is what can happen but I can never stop you doing anything yeah. when you're on your own with, you, with your friends you're gonna do what you do right right Kids do so but luckily I mean it, everything turned out right it, it, it turned out to be good people you know you know why end. because you're a loving family. It's that's what it, you know. You, oh, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're a was, loving family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. How old are your kids? Uh, my oldest are 33, and you're like and me, my, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my youngest is 29. My my daughter is 37, and my son is, I think, 34 now. Yeah, yeah. and I have yeah. five grandkids. Wow, <laughs> great. Yeah. Do you have grandchildren? Not yet. 
Well, just you wait. <laughs> That's going to change your world, man. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Start thinking now what you want them to call you, you know, papa, grandpa, uh, uh, granddad, whatever. <laughs> boss. I want them to call me boss. Boss, that's good. Boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, back to the album. I want to mention uh mm -hmm. that first track you were talking about is called Beginner's Eyes. It's it's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Um it, it's it's a little poppy, a lot of you know, it's kind of prog pop. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, it's a it's a feel good track. All your all your songs are feel kind of uh, feel good, which I mm -hmm. love. Um, mm -hmm. The dream is actually a dream, right? That was it is. from it's, a dream. It's true. Yeah, it's from a dream. I I, I just uh, it it happens every now and then that you dream about music. You dream about crazy stuff, you know. And yeah, and and one time I dreamt about a song or playing or writing a song. And then you wake up, and this is probably like five thirty in the morning, you know. And and normally we would think, oh, that was a great dream, you know, and a great song. And and then you go back to sleep and thinking, oh, it was so great, I'm gonna remember it. But you don't. Right. You never do. I, I've learned, I've learned <laughs> that. I, I, many times they just go back to sleep. So I went up. I'm lucky because I have my studio uh, at home. So I get up and I go into the studio at five thirty, switch on all the computers, the piano, and everything. And I start uh, playing the song just to get it down, you know, the basics of it, you know, and not, not mm. the arrangement, but the basics. And then sing the melody. And I mm. had a few vocal, uh, uh, sorry, lyric phrases that I put in, not all of the lyrics, but the basics of it. Right. And it, and, and it, um, yeah, it was actually something I dreamt. I dreamt this song and it, it now on the album that I never tried that before, but it, Obviously, and I, I did, the funny thing is that both Hasse, the singer, and Michael, my brother who plays bass, both right. of them, and possibly the drummer also said, oh, that's a great song. That's a great song. That should be one of the singles. And and I wasn't sure, you know, I, I liked the song, but I, I, I didn't think it was one of the stronger songs. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great song. And there's uh, something special about it because the way it came into this world from from another dream world you exactly know? And, yeah yeah so there must be something interesting i think but yeah. we'll see yeah it was meant to be it was... <laughs> uh some of the other track hollow man mm -hmm. epic sound uh kind yeah. of reminds me of a rock prog opera in a way you know yeah 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 true yeah. true true yeah yeah I, I love it um I can't pronounce it. Is it um, Ribido, Doctor Ribido? Ribido, yeah. Ribido. What? Where did that come from? The name it was just a made up name. We had a song, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, that happens every now and then. You know, the that's drum, funny. Drummer sent me some stuff, and I I worked a little bit on it, and we came up with uh, this song together, uh, and uh, and we recorded it, and then. Uh, the time comes when you you're supposed to, you know, name the songs and all, right. and put it in the system and send it to Sony and everything. Yeah, you got you got to have a name. And and he said, well, I don't I don't know. He said, I don't know what what do you want to call it? And I said, I I don't know either. But then I just made up a name, you know, something that would sound strange, you know. Huh? Who is Doctor Ribido? Who knows? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Ian Anderson many times yeah. and he, 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 same thing. He says, I made it up. <laughs> I made that name yeah. up. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. That, that's what it is with music. Sometimes yeah. you, you really explain, you do certain things or if someone yeah. asks me, why did you write that song or why did you play that melody? Why did you, why, why did you sing that? You know, and, and uh, what's the idea of this? It was the basic of this song. And sometimes you can tell, of course, right. because you have right. an idea sometimes you can't tell it's it's probably down to intuition you do something you know mm -hmm. i i don't i don't think about okay i'm gonna write a song now that's kind of an elton john song and mm -hmm. then start playing piano i never do that mm -hmm. never ever not mm -hmm. even like i'm gonna play i'm gonna uh, record or i'm gonna write a, a typical flower king song mm -hmm. it just comes naturally it's not right. for me like a flower king song it's it's a Roy in a song. If I sit down with the piano, you know, I play something and that sounds nice to me. 
Sure. That's the only way to go. I mean, I, I can't speculate, you know, or do say, oh, I'm going to write a prog song. Let's put in this uh, this riff because whatever. King Crimson had a riff or Yes had right. a riff. Um, right. Yeah, maybe they had, but they were different people, you know. They they yeah. had a different way of writing songs, you know. And here I am with my guitar or, or uh, I'm at my piano and and whatever sounds nice to me, whatever chord sounds nice to me, and if I've done it before or it has not been done before, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me. It, it's, 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 uh, I usually say it's, I, I make these songs in the first place. I actually do write songs to entertain myself. Mm -hmm. That makes I, sense. I yeah. mean, get in, 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 into the studio in the morning, maybe have a, some tea or a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and then start writing something and see how i build it over a couple of hours and 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 you do the arrangement and orchestrations and and in the in the afternoon you have something that sounds like great music to mm -hmm. you and if you're lucky it sounds like great music the next day mm -hmm. because it that's not always the case sometimes you're in a certain mood and you think ah oh, that's great and then come back two days later and it wasn't that great you know but uh, sometimes it could be the other way around you mm -hmm. You're doing something. You play well. That's that sounds like a pretty nice song, but maybe not fantastic. And then you come back, and then maybe you change a bit of the right the arrangement. It could be the tempo. Just I, I actually for this album, I changed the tempo for certain songs, and they, uh, they, they, I was hesitating a bit, you know. And then suddenly you you up the tempo, you slow down the tempo a bit, and suddenly everything falls into place. Mm -hmm. That's what it is with music. It's like mm -hmm. a piece of clay and you just... You exactly. Know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then you look at it and say, oh, that's that's what I wanted. Yep. This, now, now I'm pleased with what I have, you know. Yeah. So I write books. I'm, a, I'm an author as well. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You know, you go back, you rewrite, you rewrite, you change things, you add things, you know, it's... Yeah. Until you're satisfied, basically. Yeah, you know? the same thing. Absolutely yeah. the same. Or you're painting, you know, painting. Same or... thing. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes lyrics don't have to have a lot of meaning. You just want something to rhyme. <laughs> it happens too. <laughs> ask, ask Paul McCartney or ask John Anderson or, or Ian Anderson. or Yeah. Sometimes the lyrics uh, definitely have a meaning. And, and right. you, oh, yeah. it's a story or something like that. Or it's something you feel you need to say. But sometimes it's just like, I think John Anderson said at some point when people mm -hmm. were criticizing, yes, uh, lyrics. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Well, I sang it because it sounds nice to me. You know, it sounds mm -hmm. like a part of the music, mm -hmm. which is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Why do you play that symbol? I don't know why I play that symbol. Why, why did you play that <laughs> sound of the music? Can you, can you tell me why did you play that sound? Well, I, I yeah. played it because I... I like the sound of it, you know. Sure. Or I like the sound of those words. And, yeah. and that's part of the music. And in the big orchestrations, you have all these sounds. You have, I mean, like in a symphony orchestra, you have someone playing like a, a tubular bell or a glockenspiel and someone playing these cellos and, and the French horns and everything. Mm -hmm. And it, it's part of a, a bigger construction, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and in the same way, I, I think the words in, mm -hmm. in a song and... And some people have done beautiful things with vocals, mm -hmm. you know, harmony vocals. And I'm thinking of that 10cc song, I'm Not In Love. Are you familiar yeah. with that? Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, with all those vocal layers. And this is a time before the computers, really. Yeah. So they just did it over, overdubbed, overdubbed. And, and that's the whole thing with that song. It is a nice song, but I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the construction of the vocal layers and everything, you know, mm -hmm. and don't even know what they sing there's probably just an ah mm -hmm. <laughs> true yeah. yeah and i'm not in love yeah. it's a great song graham yeah yeah, yeah. Graham wrote that. um have you played with an orchestra have you has flower kings performed with an never. orchestra never that's been that would be about... so cool yeah i know there's been talk and i mean maybe 10 12 years ago I think the record label said, well, maybe you should do something. But there, uh, there are certainly uh, orchestras in the eastern part of Europe that you can uh, mm -hmm. and you work with, you know, because they're not super expensive, you know. And, and live maybe, video would be cool, you know, yeah, somewhere. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been on my mind and to someday do something mm -hmm. like that. You know, we'll see. I love to hear that. I love yeah. orchestras. I, you know that I'm yeah. amazed how they put it all together, put all the pieces together. You know, yeah. it's 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 really something. Yeah. It's uh back to the album, Mother Earth. I heard a little bit of Queen there from the guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? My favorite track on this album, I think, is the Queen. Um, mm -hmm. Very medieval sound in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's an epic track, man. I love, love it. You know, mm -hmm. the guitar reminds me of Camel a little bit because I love Camel. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The melodic, you know? melodic guitar. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's something I think it's... Well, I, I listen to Camel a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the band that I e even listen to more that are not the same, but, you know, of a Dutch band called Focus. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Focus. They've been around. Yeah, Hocus Pocus. Yeah. yeah. Jan Ackerman, you know. Yeah. And Tishwan Leer. Uh, yep. Great composer. And they, they wrote just beautiful melodies. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, sort of uh, jazz rock but much of it was actually lots of classical influences mm -hmm. so they made an impact on me when i was 15 something right and the the, the interesting thing here actually the the queen is mm -hmm. first of all i wrote the song when the the queen of england died <laughs> okay that makes sense yeah it makes sense, but it was actually a coincidence. I, I didn't know. Huh. I was working with the song and, and she died, you know, and I, I hadn't really? named the song. But uh, that's that's how it got its name. And the other interesting thing is I asked my friend uh, from way, way back. Uh, I went to school with. Uh, he was a guitar player. I didn't play guitar. But he saw that uh, I had a guitar hanging on the wall in my home because my mm -hmm. father got a guitar, you know, and my my mother gave the guitar to my father when they married. Right. But he never he never started playing. He was more into sports and stuff like that. So yeah. he never he played maybe five times and then it was just on the wall. But anyway, my friend uh, saw the guitar and said, "Do you play guitar?" I said, "No, not really." But I listen to lots of music and and he said, "I show you a few chords." So he mm -hmm. showed me a few chords. And then I practiced and he, he showed me a couple of more chords. And then we started playing uh, together. And mm -hmm. then we started the band together. Uh, but he was he was a better guitar player than me. So I I had to play the bass. So that's how I started as a bass player. Mm. And that's funny because that's also what I did with Steve Hackett band. I played bass for a year with Steve Hackett. Yeah. So so my my thinking is guitar player but also bass player you know right but anyway so so my friend there Jürgen he he was sort of my teach guitar teacher mm -hmm. my first guitar teacher and it's this guy who play on the album we reconnected just recently and really yeah oh interesting <laughs> he, became, he became a doctor he has a, a little bit smarter in that sense you know <laughs> in that kind of thing you know so he he worked all his life as life as a doctor and then hmm. uh, out retired, and and uh, so he started playing a little bit again and uh, we reconnected and uh, he's also a photographer, uh, mm -hmm. more like a freelance, uh, taking photos at concerts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so I asked him. Well, I said, "Well, you play the Spanish guitar probably better than me, still, you know." So uh, because it takes a little bit of effort to play this, the, the the Spanish guitar, it's not the same as playing with a pick, right. you know, an electric, right, uh, on the nylon string. Uh, and I have this song that I felt should be like uh, almost like a medieval start, mm -hmm. you know, with you know this. Uh, I can see a, a big castle somewhere, you know, and and th this big hall and this guy <laughs> playing. Uh, and I said, "Well, I I can try." He said, "I'm not uh, I'm not sure my shops are up to to speed mm -hmm. right now, but but you know, I said take your time and and you can do it whenever you have time and and try and try again until you're happy with it." So it's an interesting story. And it's a nice book ending, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Here's the guy that that showed me and 
encouraged me to play guitar and and i invite him to play on my album you know <laughs> like yeah. whatever 50 years later wow that's a good story it, it is yeah it is. yeah it, you should invite him back again and play on some more tracks uh, you know? <laughs> maybe we'll see yeah because we'll that's a that's a great track man i love i really love that song it is. it's yeah. a great song i describe it as an epic it's an epic tune. It really is. In, in a way, it is. In a yeah. way, it is. It's, it's cinematic. I would say it's kind of yep. cinematic. It is cinematic. Yeah. yeah. The other uh, favorite tunes, Season's End, with the yeah. opening keyboards. That's a classic prog song. And I love the bass in that, too. Yeah. Got a good bass in that. Oh, to- yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's like uh, I'm 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 to be honest, I haven't listened to the songs, all of them. Uh, <laughs> recently. No, but I mean that's what happens. You you work it with does. the album for, for months, and then yeah. you deliver everything to, and then you do the vinyl, uh, right, mastering and all that. You know, so you hear the songs all the time, and and at, uh, by the time you are uh, go, going go out uh, and play these songs live, I want to have some kind of a feeling for them mm-hmm. left played into death <laughs> yeah. so i i haven't heard the album in, in quite some time and oh, it's, a, it's a wonderful I mean, album i love it yeah i mean i mean i yeah. i i left i mean the uh, leaving the masters to to the record company i left with a feeling that was very positive and sometimes mm-hmm. i have to say sometimes you leave the the material to the record label uh, with a feeling that is i don't know if this is a good album is it really because you've been working so hard, so you can't really tell. Mm-hmm. It, it sort of fuck up your your mind in a way. Yeah, yeah, it does. But but for this album, I I actually felt that this is a really good album, you know. And and there's something about every song that uh, it's it's meant to be on this album, and it's uh, good, and it's going to be good in ten years from now. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, and I have to say, also love the sound of the album, mm-hmm. the drum sound. Just the way I want them to sound. Yeah, and, um, it's not over. Uh, I, th- I think we have um, uh, worked in a with the mixes in a in kind of a dynamic way, so uh, it's not crowded with with lots of overdubs. It's it's like so yeah, sometimes it's a big wall of sound, but mm-hmm. also lots of dynamics. You know, so you can hear every single instrument clearly. You know, you can hear the bass lines. You can hear the uh, the, the keyboards, you know, when there's a piano or there's an organ, you can actually hear it instead right. of just layers and layers of sound. You know, sometimes I can feel that some of the, the the contemporary prog rock is just a big wall of sounds. You know, lots of distorted guitars. And I agree with you. I agree with you. Drums and a lot and of vocal. shredding. You know, very loud. You know, too too much. A little yeah, too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. the the type that type of. Of of uh, it can be impressive, but it takes about three or four minutes, and then you you just longing for something to be you know Different. take it down a little bit to play, and and I yeah. want to jazz, you know, this great right. jazz, the way they play dynamic and right, and, you know, exactly. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. I think they call that prog metal now. That's prog, prog metal. Yeah, yeah. Prog yeah. metal. Yeah. Some of it's okay, but some of it gets a oh, little too much. Totally. I heard yeah. something. I actually heard something, and that was probably uh, I don't know what it's called. It it's um, it's Bumblefoot. You know Bumblefoot. Yeah, Bumblefoot. Sure. Uh, yeah. What a great player. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, he's a musician all around. I mean, yeah. Singer. I bet he can play anything. He can. I think he yeah, can. That's, it's yeah, that's him and Derek Sherinian and mm-hmm. uh, Simon Phillips and another yep. uh, guy. It's probably I don't know. It's something between. Derek and and uh, and Simon maybe I don't know but anyway they just released an, a live album a new I album Shridian and Phillips right uh-huh. yeah yeah that's great I mean they can shred for sure yeah <laughs> they, do, they do but but they do it in a very elegant way you know and and so yeah. I mean the textures and the sounds from Derek and and uh, Bumblefoot's guitar playing is just amazing. I've it. had Derek on the show, and I'm, I'm yeah. going to interview Simon soon. We're going to talk oh, about the new album. <laughs> yeah, great stuff, man. Um, 
I got to mention Str- uh, Stronghold is another great track. That's a, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah. I love Stronghold. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really want to emphasize is Day for Peace. Um, there's a girl singing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. She's kind of have a she's kind of has that Disney voice, you know, that she could sing, you know, oh, for Disney. Who yeah. who is who's singing in on that track? Yeah. Uh, her name is Mariana. He's uh, she's actually from Russia, but she really? moved. Yeah, she moved about a year ago to England. Uh, she's part of a, a duo called "I Am the Morning." I am the uh-huh. morning. Yeah, uh, if you haven't heard them, check them out. Yeah, it's like "I Am the Morning" is like just one, like one word. I don't know why they call themselves "I Am the Morning," but. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, a Russian piano player and her, and they have guest musicians, and uh, they made a couple of albums, and we toured with them a couple of years ago, and uh, have been friends since then, and so I had this song, and I really couldn't sing the song because it's mm-hmm. a little too high for me to sing, right. and right. maybe Hasse could sing them, but I was just thinking maybe we bring in a female voice, you know, to I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful, and uh, you know, I I'm a sucker for women in Prague. Oh, <laughs> it just huh. goes so well, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're mesmerizing. They're haunting. You know, I I just love their their voice when when they sing Prague. That's a great yeah. song. I'm glad you brought her in. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's a, that, that could be a soundtrack. That track could be a could. that could be a soundtrack. Could. And I've yeah. I've um, I've said from from the start I think that that's probably one of my favorite songs on the mm-hmm. album, and and I wanted that to be maybe the single, but I think the record company and some of the guys in the band thought that well that's a great song, but the other songs will probably mm-hmm. be more appealing to the prog rock audience. Right. But in my world, if I if I just set aside all the commercial aspects of it, just thinking of music, you know, if you. Yeah. You know, uh, you live and you die. And when I die, I, I'm going to remember not the money I made or not the fame or not the autographs I was writing. I'm going to remember the, the the good music I made. Yeah. Something yeah. I can say, I did that, you know. That's, and that's right. That's a fucking great song. And, and I'm proud of it, you know. So and, it's one of those songs, you know. And and uh, of course, it, I mean, it's all the other Flower King's music and the music I've been writing with other bands also. But uh uh-huh. Just certain songs that I can feel like that song will stand the test of time, you know. Sure. Anyone can sing it. It's not like yeah. it it hasn't it doesn't have any guitar solos. There's nothing really that has to be played or sung by the Flower Kings. I'm I'm talking more about the song and the, mm-hmm. the words and the music in mm-hmm. itself and the simplicity of it, but it's just complete as it is, I think. Yeah, Queen and Day for Peace to me, those are the oh, lovely, yeah, the highlights of the album. Oh, thank you, Uh, (laughs) it's incredible. I like the drum roll too with the intro for the day of oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful, beautiful song, man. The whole album, I love the album. You guys are so you know, know, I love Prague because we get talented musicians, you know what I mean? That's it's what it's all about, yeah, you know. I've yeah. always loved Prague. I've, I've been a big, big fan of Prague since I was a kid. You know, it's yeah. it's been, you know, you and your mannerisms remind me a little bit of John Anderson. I can see why you guys would get along together. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it it was uh, it, it it all felt very natural. You know, it, it's it's uh, um, sometimes you work you have a working relationship with people and they're very talented and. Mm-hmm. You never connect, right? I've had some of those, you know, and and you, you you respect them, and they are great players, but you never connect. But with John was very natural from from the first time we met, you know. It's uh, and and uh, all the working process is like um, he can say whatever he want, I can say mm-hmm. whatever I want, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I listen to him, and I I can be very stubborn. Uh, he's a bit stubborn too, but he he does it. <laughs> he is, but but I have to say he he does it very clever, in and in a way that you never feel like he's saying, "Hey, I'm John Anderson, and listen right. to me." 
never ever yeah you say well you 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 can try this and we can see how you know how you feel about it maybe we try like that you know and and you can try and if if you don't like it we can go back so it's in a very clever way uh, you you can get to a point where maybe i say well hmm I didn't like the idea, but now that I hear it, I actually think his idea was really good. <laughs> and I like to be surprised in that way, because if someone is very brutal and say just saying, "Oh, that sounds like shit," you know, then I can be also a little bit like that, you know. I say, oh, yeah. shut the fuck up! You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's my band. It's my fucking band. <laughs> That's funny. So, <laughs> So, so um, yeah, I mean, it's just like a, a, a very open and 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 friendly uh, working relationship that that uh, is always nice to come back to. I have to say. Yeah, I love John. He's been on the show many times, and yeah, yeah. I, I actually had an interview with Chris Squire a long time ago mm -hmm. when they when they dumped him out of the band, and I told Chris how upset I was that he did that, that they did that, yeah. you know. Because I don't, I didn't think that was right. I'm a big Yes fan from way back, but I like the original Yes, you yeah. know. So yeah, I think you know I could see a new Yes formation. It's going to be, let's see, you on guitar, mm -hmm. Getty Lee on bass, mm -hmm. Rick Wakeman back, Mike mm -hmm. Portnoy on drums, mm -hmm. and then of course John Anderson. How's that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite a proposal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Getty Lee did a good job with Yes on the oh, Rock and Roll did. Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. totally, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. He I fit right he, in, I think. He's he's probably a big fan too, you know. Yeah, I want to mention Invention of Knowledge. That was a that's a great that was a great album. I like that album as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys did a great job on that. Really good job on that. Yeah. What what what's what happened with the Sea Within? The Sea Within, uh, I think already when we were working on the album, um, a couple of, of strange things happened. Uh, one thing was that I found out on the internet that our bass player joined Steve Hackett's band. And, okay. and I've been in Steve Hackett's band, so I know right. it <laughs> takes a lot of time you know, to be in that band and lots of touring. So I, I realized the plans we had made you know, with The Sea Within, they were no longer valid, you know. Mm. So that was kind of a hmm. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say backstabbing, but it, it it just felt very strange, you know, that we one day you're talking about how you should launch the new band and, and then suddenly you, you you realize your bass player joined another band, you know. And and the other was actually Daniel Gildenlev, who who uh, I don't know how, how that came about, but he was in the process of, of uh, writing and recording the album, was hesitant, you know, and mm -hmm wanted probably to make another album uh, that wasn't uh, this kind of progressive rock. And I think that was the whole idea that the record label thought, okay, you can put together a band, you know, to make a progressive rock album, you know, with, with a couple of guys. And, and, and so uh, I think maybe the problem with the band was the, the communication, you know, Mm -hmm. I think myself and, and Tom Brislin and Marco Miniman, we were pretty much on the same page, you know. Right. And later when we got in uh, um, Casey McPherson on vocals for a few songs, you know, I think that helped. So the shows we did uh, was with Casey, you know. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, may maybe the, the, the whole idea of the formation of the band was wrong from the beginning. We Maybe we right. should have looked further for musicians that wanted to maybe get together meet yeah. and talk about the music and talk about what we wanted to do right now this was kind of um what felt right you know if you put it on paper it looks great you know mm -hmm. with these guys together but not always it works <laughs> out in reality you know you have probably yeah. examples like uh, if you're familiar with the band uk Oh and yeah, they were a great band, really good yeah. band. They were, but they I didn't mean, last. Yeah, they didn't last. They, they did one album with Alan I know. and B. Bruford, and that was great. And they did really another good. album with with um, uh, Terbosio, and that was mm -hmm. great. I mean, both bands were great, but mm -hmm. 
I mean, the first formation didn't last because mm -hmm. probably similar things, you know, half of the band wanted to do more improvising and the other band were strict uh, progressive rock structure thing, yeah. you know, a bit heavier. So, so I think it's important that, that everyone that joins a band knows what it means to join mm -hmm. a band and what are the conditions and, so that's something I when when we bring in people in into the Flower Kings, it's I, I try to be open about everything, right. Right. how it works, you know. You're not you're not gonna make a lot of money <laughs> being <laughs> Flower Kings. And and we're gonna play a little bit of this and that, and you know, and if you wanna write songs, sure, I'm right. open to you know there's there's nothing stopping you for yeah. writing all of the album if you come up with great songs. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. So, so I think it's as long as you know the rules, I think it's fine. But I think sometimes these types of of super groups uh, may work, you know, in a under certain conditions. You know, I think a little bit the same thing with Transatlantic. It's it's like it worked and it didn't mm -hmm. work that well. Both, right. I, you know, a great band uh, at at our best. I think we're a really good band. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that didn't work that well, you know, and and so I think uh, for Transatlantic to be a full time band, I think would have been very difficult. You know, I I admire you guys because today you guys are playing with not one band, not two yeah. bands, yeah. <laughs> three and four bands. I know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I suppose at 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 some point you play, you find yourself playing with five or six. It's unbelievable. Bands. You know, yeah. I don't know how you do it, man. Especially, uh, you know, Neil, Neil Morris. Yeah. I had Neil on the show. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the absolute universe. I think that's when I had him on. We were yeah. promoting that album, you know. And then, of course, he's with uh, the Virgilio and, and Jennings, Ross Jennings, you know, yeah. it's also with Haken, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. flying, flying colors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys are all like one family, you know. I know, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> It is crazy. I've never seen anything like that before. Everybody belongs to other bands, you yeah. know. I like Neil. Neil Neil's a Neil's a good guy. I, yeah, he's, I like a good guy. he's a good guy. Yeah, and Mike Portnoy too. He's another one that's yeah. been everywhere. Big music fan. Yeah, <laughs> thing and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a little bit too with Andy Tillerson, right? With the tangent. Did, oh, did you yeah, with that's Andy? right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it still is on the tangent, you know. And we had also I had a band together with uh, Ned Sylvan and and Jonas and Lala Larson, you know, called Agents of Mercy. We did three albums, you know. So yeah, there's there's been lots of different. And I did a rerun with Kaipa, my old uh, mm -hmm. professional Original band. band. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and and tangent, I, I was on two albums, I think, and maybe on one live album. That's a good band. I like the, the, yeah. I like I like the tangent. Yeah. They're excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I noticed? Um your two sons, right? It's Johann Sebastian, Peter Gabriel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> no, not really. So it's you, it's you, not Dweezil. It's not Dweezil. <laughs> exactly. It's not Moon <laughs> Unit. <laughs> So Johan, that's after John Sebastian from yeah yeah, yeah. and the the other interesting thing is uh, we were actually at a Peter Gabriel concert when uh -huh. my wife was pregnant with, with <laughs> no Peter wonder. no wonder yeah and yeah. he was really kicking you know we were yeah. I think we saw the I can't remember now what tour it must have been this is in, in 93, 94, 94. no it must be ninety three. Uh, and and uh, he was really kicking, you know, uh, hearing the music, you know, and la loud sound, you know, and uh, and then when he was born, you know, we were talking about names and and uh, we said, well, he was really kicking when hearing Peter Gable's music. So, and, and Peter is, we say Peter, Peter here, right? In, in, is Peter is a very common name, mm -hmm. and uh, Gabriel. And uh, that's uh, also a very common name in Sweden, you know. Mm -hmm. So Peter Gabriel, uh, Peter Gabriel. And how so, about uh, John Sebastian? Where did, where did the, were you a big loving spoonful fan or? No, it's, yeah. it's Johann Sebastian Bach. Oh, Bach. Okay, I'm yeah. thinking 
John Sebastian. Yeah, well, I was actually welcome back, Cotter. <laughs> not, I was a big fan of Loving Spoonful. That they were a great band. Yeah, yeah. When I'm thinking about you know '67 or whatever, the Summer of Love and all that, you know, the yeah. San Francisco wave of music. You know, you have Jefferson Airplane and those bands. You know, and yeah. Great Dead. I think the band I, I liked most was actually um, Loving Spoonful. Mm -hmm. Great line of hit songs, you know. Yeah, he always played the uh, the harp. Yeah, the, right? yeah. the harp. Yeah, yeah. I actually had him on my show. I did. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, real nice guy. Yeah. Real nice guy. Well, here's your final question. Mm -hmm. I ask everybody this question. I get some very interesting answers. If you had a Field of Dreams wish to perform, collaborate with anybody from anybody from the past or present, who would that be? <laughs> I've, I've heard this before, and my answer is always and always. If it's someone that's alive, I, it mm -hmm. would be Paul McCartney. I get that a lot. I get a lot of Paul McCartney. <laughs> I, I could say Ringo. That's that's a close second, probably. But yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. That's one. That's one. Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah, that's what true. can I say? Yeah. How yeah. about from the past? How about somebody that's? Uh... Oh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, to be honest, there are people that I find interesting in terms of of producers or players or writers. You know, I mean, David Bowie is probably one. Right. That I'd like to, you know. Uh, and many, many people that I respect and admire, you know, and even music that's not super close to what I do. I mean, people like Bruce Springsteen seems mm -hmm. to be a nice guy, you know, and the way he's just pushing forward with his music and the band and and the feeling you get from stage from from him, you know. And of course, then you have Peter Gabriel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got a new album out, too, I believe. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I saw him uh, his show a couple of months ago here in Sweden. That was an excellent show. Huh. From from a visual point of view, it was really interesting, you know, and and great musicians. And he, he doesn't play too much Genesis stuff, though, does he? The uh, old Genesis. Yeah. No, I think he, he did actually sing, or did he did something? Maybe when he did a tour together with Sting. Uh, right. Uh, short tour he did something uh from selling england i think or right. maybe Sting actually sang uh dancing out with the moonlit night i think right right <laughs> i don't know but anyway i mean that's that's a great show and the visuals are just amazing you know mm -hmm. so that's very very entertaining and i have the deepest respect for him as a musician you know and uh great set list uh great mm -hmm. vibe great musicians and so, it's, I'm, it's i'm glad steve hackett brought back a lot of that the Genesis oh, stuff too. Yeah, totally, He's totally. good. Yeah. Totally. It's always a good show. Always a good show. And, yeah. and so many people are really happy to be able to go see this. Yep. Played well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's really, I bet some of it is probably played better than Genesis played back in the day. And then you oh, have yeah. an actor singing and he can. Oh, he's he a can, great singer. Yeah. He can do Peter Gable and he can he do. Can. And I, I was just thinking when he got the gig, you know, they couldn't find someone that would fit this band better because he has the the first time I heard Nad actually, uh, I found it online. Someone was was talking about this guy that sounded like Phil Collins or Peter Gable. I can't remember. And I, I just went there and, and listened for a while. Uh, some song he wrote with some other guy and. And I, I had to say, tell my wife, come, you have got to listen to this. Who's this singing? <laughs> is it is it Phil Collins? Is it <laughs> no, it's a guy from Sweden. <laughs> and the funny thing, then I, I, I look at the guy, I think, what? The, I, I know this guy. He came to a show I played. We played a show mm -hmm. with the Flames somewhere in outside of Stockholm. And, and I remember him because he had he dressed up, you know, in this purple velvet suit, <laughs> kind of. A, he walked in like a star, you know. Right. Yeah. And and I and he was talking about he was working on an album with some guy, and you know, and it's kind of Genesis material. And I remember that. So I just, hmm, 
okay, now I, I get it. This was the guy, and he's singing like Peter Gable and mm-hmm. Phil Collins. Yeah. So no wonder he got the gig, you know, with, with uh, yeah. Steve. And he's been there for now for soon 10 years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they're out there still. And, his and solo material is good too. His, oh, al- his solo yeah. album, it's excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually was watched a video yesterday. I can't remember the probably one, not the latest album, but the one before. Right. Uh, really, a good video, and 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 I mean, I love his voice. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, real prog voice. You uh, know, I think it was t- Steve Hackett that told me that he he's a real ladies' man too. The women yeah. love him. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, what's next for the Flower Kings? We got this new album out. We we got yeah. the new singles, new video. Yeah, I mean, I, right now I'm in this uh, this. Uh, I'm gonna do another interview now in about three minutes, I guess. Okay, we're yeah, done. So we're gonna we're gonna finish but um yep. yeah then we're doing like um uh a weekend here in 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 my hometown you know oh, good. Uh, for, the, for the first time you know it's like a flower kings weekend release party right slash. and um so we're gonna play the 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 the, the set list but we're gonna play uh, lots of other music bringing in some of the guests from from the from the past flower kings records etc and uh some jamming and uh, some qu- questions and answers and signing and photo sessions all the the stuff that people do these days you know <clears throat> yeah, you got you do have some gigs you got budapest right coming up in november oh yeah um, i mean we we've yeah. got about uh bratislava um, also in december a, a, yeah. a month, i think of, of touring in europe right right awesome so that, yeah yeah it's gonna be. Yeah. Fun. It's, it's been a long time since we've done a proper tour because of yeah. you know COVID and everything. And and then you think it's gonna open up, and then people are saying, "Oh, we don't." It's you know, it's it's difficult times and and very all this uncertainty. You know, it's gonna right. shut up again. Can yeah. we book? You know, can we guarantee the money? And and it's been like that for a couple of years now. Mm. And you just have to surrender. This is what it is. And and to, I mean, honestly, for me, it's not the end of the world, but. Right. But now we came to a point where we can actually do a tour uh, and, and do it proper. And and then we'll see, of course, after that. I, right. I wish you guys would come to the U.S. You know, to, um, concerts are booming here. There's yeah. all, you know, pe- we're starved for music. And, yeah. you know, H- Hagen did a tour here know, not long ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they did well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, it's, uh, we have a guy working on it and we are going Good. to uh, cruise. So we are hoping that we can do at least maybe five, six, seven shows in America. Awesome. That'd be yeah. great. That'd yeah. be wonderful. I want to say very special thanks to uh, Roy Avon of Royal Avenue Media for arranging this interview. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guy. He's my he's my prog guy. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-order the new album by the Flower Kings. Look at you now. Um, and it's you can pre-order that. I think it's uh, www.theflowerkings.link.2 backslash look at you now or just go to the Flower Kings website uh, to get more information. Um, also, you guys, you have your own website, Uh Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You guys are everywhere. Thank you so much, man, for being on the show today. It's been wonderful. Love your music. Uh, enjoy the family. Don't work too hard. Uh, <laughs> they're used to it. It's fine. It's good. Yeah. Just wait till you have grandkids. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You're going to love it. Yeah. That's what I will thank, do. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.